Traveling the Vortex. We've joined Bernice Summerfield as she arrives on Excellus in episode number 356. The animals have taken over the slaughterhouse. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. How are you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. Me too. Tired but good. Tired but good. Do you guys have a good week? We're getting to be a broken record here. Every week That's we're tired. That's because I have a baby and I'm always <laughs> tired. People come to expect it, right? Yep. It's because I don't sleep. <laughs> I'm always tired. It's because it's Sean. I'm eerily not tired today. I actually hey. feel pretty good today. What's your excuse? I have no idea. <laughs> I got well rested this weekend. I didn't do a 20, uh, 72-hour uh, film festival. I had a I don't have weekend. a baby. I, yeah, you were off Friday then. Yeah, right? I was. Ah, the perks of a state job. <laughs> Admittedly, that may have something to do with my my level of tired. Uh, the having Friday off? No, the 72-hour 72 72 hour hour film, <laughs> film festival. Yeah, we all went to Kansas City Comic Con today. Yeah. Brands. Took part in a panel with uh, some friends of ours. We mentioned Cat over at A Gal and a Gay podcast. They're so much fun. They are. We had a lot of fun talking about podcasting and kind of talk more about who than podcasting yeah, than we expected. Yeah. But we appreciate them inviting us. And then we all, of course, got to walk the floor. Jim Owens is Wonder Woman. And She's so adorable. Head of the con. Only a couple people stopped to take her picture this time. But I think that's mostly because she was in the carrier, you know. So we had fun. Yeah, not bad. Um, it, was it was a fun. smaller con than we're used to at the convention. Uh, very similar to the first year Planet Comic Con was there. So it was a lot smaller than we're used to. Yeah, and most definitely. So, and being on Sunday, it was pretty slow, too. So, What yeah. else did you guys do this week? Anything? I saw Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, how was it? Very good. I will preface my, uh, my, my statement by saying I have not seen or read the originals. Um so I don't know, I don't know how good it really was, but I, I enjoyed this version immensely. And uh, every time I see Kenneth Branagh, I am more impressed with him as an actor because now I've seen him do an American accent, and I've seen him do a Russian accent, and now I've seen him do a French accent, and he's English. <laughs> Just kind of mind numbing. But what really upsets me about Kenneth Branagh was that mustache. You didn't like the mustache? No, I, I adore the mustache. I wish I, I would give anything to be able to. I'd get rid of this if I could do that. An impressive mustache. Do you think it was his real mustache. facial hair, though, or do you think it was just makeup? I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Gives me a goal to strive for. I'd, I'd give anything to be able to have a stash like that okay. in all of its majesty. But uh, no, the movie's really, really good. It's very well done. Of course, it's got a cast to die for. <laughs> um, but thoroughly enjoyed it. I watched Lost Soul, the. I forgot the subtitle. It's about the making of the 96 uh, I'm a Dr. Moreau. Oh, <laughs> finishing you're, you're, my, you're still, still stuck on those? Finishing it <laughs> off because obviously the movie was a disaster. And watching this documentary, wow, it was whew, it was a mess. It's a, it's a pretty decent documentary. We also watched the original Going in Style. Which oh, was, with uh, uh, George Burns. Yeah. How was it? It was okay. I, I actually think I... Like the first one, the the remake better. It, really, the remake had more humor to it. I thought there were a couple of moments in this one that were decently funny, but not as funny. George Burns did a good job in it, though. It was well acted. Let's move on to news. What's in the news? So I don't know if you saw uh, the BBC unveiled Jodie Whittaker's new outfits in a nice promotional picture. I did see. What do you guys think of it? I love it. Why? I think it's quirky. I think it doesn't go too far to underfeminize her, but it doesn't go so far as to oversexualize her, which is probably my biggest concern about her character or their treatment of her character. Um, I think it invokes a lot of imagery from past doctors, which I think is kind of cool. And it's just, it's quirky. It looks fun. It doesn't look staunchy. It's, it's, it's a, 
it's a bold statement saying we're going away from the doctor you've been used to now for the last three years, three seasons. And um, it it feels fresh and new and a good change. And it it really kind of almost harkens back to Baker's kind of more bohemian, whimsical look. Uh, I was maybe say, even Patrick Troughton's second kind of, doctor look. I she, think that it just kind of has that feel. I think it's something we've been away from for a long time. We've had men in suits, with the exception of Eccleston. We've had men in suits for several years now. And so I think that this is a, a good... Does, does a uh, sparkly rhinestone hoodie count as a No, suit no. Because well, he has a jacket on a lot of times. Too, yeah, or, well, uh, well, it was, yeah, not always, but yeah, he sometimes. did. He would have a sports coat or something over it. But uh, No, I think, and, and Keith is going to point this out because he's already pointed out to me, and uh, or who said it earlier, but it's not going to be her first. Uh, oh, it's yes. not going to be her only outfit. So. Oh, I'm sure not. I'd be disappointed if it was. Because, I mean, look at Capaldi's. He he came out with the magician look, and then a couple episodes later it was practically gone anyway. So. I, li- I like the new outfit. It... It looks kind of like a, a 70s hippie, which I think is in tune with the character a little bit. Um, yeah. I agree with pretty much everything you said, Glenn. <laughs> I like the quirkiness of it. I like that it, it almost looks more like a Doctor costume than we've gotten in the new series so far. Because it doesn't look like every guy per outfit. It's, you know, unique. I don't like it. Why? I, 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 I will preface this by saying I, I, too, was worried that all of a sudden, because she was female, they were going to sexualize her. And I, I didn't, I, you know, the doctor does not need to be hot. That's just, she's the doctor. I also did not want, or you had said something interesting at one point about it looked like she was cosplaying as a man, or that was a concern that people, yeah, you know. She well, doesn't like look like she's cosplaying video. as an announcement yeah. video. Um, and, and I didn't want that either. I, I, I wasn't, you know, that. I was not expecting... Oh, like a Missy, you know, Victorian Mary Poppins garb. Because I don't don't think I'd wanted that either. I wanted practicality, functionality, you know, clothes. Um, This just doesn't work for me. Um, I I appreciate the fact that it's, I guess, functional. Um, I don't know. These are what, culottes? I don't know what you call those. Yeah. I don't like the pants at all. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't like the fact that her ankles are showing. Um, because that, to me, screams... <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that too much skin, Sean? No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We've gone back to Victorian England here. No, I just... Oh, my gosh. Her ankles are showing. That, that screams... Cover those ankles up. That is over-sexualization. That, that, that screams to me impracticality. Because if you have to go down in a swamp, you... you, you now your pants won't you, get wet. Yeah, no, but it doesn't, you know... And I, I, I just, I don't like the pants. Um, I, I think the the boots are also, they look almost unlaced. Because they've got that weird, like they're laced they're up to here, but then the they're way. open at the top. That seems strange to me. Any any one piece of it is okay. Like, you know, a, a lot of people are like, oh, she's wearing suspenders. Like, suspenders is not a big deal. Two wore suspenders, seven wore suspenders, 11 wore suspenders. I have no problem with suspenders. I don't yeah. have a problem with the fact that they're yellow. Those are braces. Okay, they're braces. It's probably important to call those braces because women wear suspenders, what we call garters, on stockings. So. Oh, really? In the UK. I yeah. did not know that. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs> she, I, I don't mind that they're yellow braces. So our UK use listeners might think, wow, she's showing her suspenders? Well, her ankle is exposed. So um, The coat is another, you know, I, I like the fact that it's a long coat. Uh, you know, I don't mind the t-shirt, even though, yes, it's very more and many. Um, the T-shirt is not Mork and Mindy. No. It has one single stripe. That's the thing that has irritated me the most and about this weekend. Mork and Mindy, is the, everybody the is saying were... it looks like Mork, and it the suspenders okay. don't even the braces don't even look like Mork's braces. Can you imagine Mork and Garter? With, <laughs> I totally can. But oh yeah, because they're Robin Williams. <laughs> It, it, there, yeah, no, none of that, until somebody said that, I never, ever would have gone to Mork. Never, ever would I have looked no, at it. Even when somebody I. photoshopped them side by side. I thought that still does not look like Mork to me. Okay. The shirt is very Wesley Crusher. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll give you that. <laughs> because of the single stripe. Well, the I'm, mid, I'm, I'm, middle I'm stripe. I'm not a fan of that either. Um, it just any, any one of these pieces would be like, oh, okay, cool. This outfit doesn't work together. That, I think, is my biggest problem with it. I expected a bit more fashion sense from the doctor. <laughs> Bear with me. 
<laughs> and, and this is going to sound sexist, especially as a woman. I, I don't know of a woman that would reach into the closet and put this outfit together. I, I honestly don't. I showed it to Mel and said, so what do you think of this? Didn't prep her. She said, oh, look, they were just... And I'd already formed my opinion on it, obviously, but I just I didn't say anything. So what do you think of this? And she went, ew, that's the outfit? I said, yeah. Ew, that's coming from Mel. Who, last time I like checked was either. female. Sarah so, didn't like it either. She thinks it looks childish, though. That's why she doesn't like um, it. So it's just, I, I don't know. I, you know, And again, it's, it's, a, it's a footnote, because obviously we, this is a Technicolor nightmare was a thing and it's not you know you you grow to get used to things i'm sure it's not going to be your only outfit i'm sure it's not going to be the only thing in the wardrobe and even if it is i'll get used to it it's just at first glance it's like nah it's not the it's thing not is really working for me fashion has so much been a part of the doctor over the years and unfortunately we shouldn't even be here sitting here talking about what she's wearing who cares well, ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, no, we shouldn't though. Ultimately, she had better embody the qualities well, that's of the, the doctor, most thing, yes. and she better. Uh, well, I'm, I'm making it like it's demand. She better do this. No, if she embodies all the qualities of the doctor and she uh, is, does a wonderful performance, it doesn't matter what she's wearing. I don't care. Oh no, no, no. And and to, to be fair, I we're mean, not picking Paul apart. Wore a sheet. We're, 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 <laughs> and he wore it well. <laughs> we, we are not in any way, shape, or form picking apart Jody. Whitaker's, uh, you know, she, she is not to blame for this. We did the same thing when Matt Smith showed up looking like uh, an English professor. And I didn't like that look either. We did? Oh, oh, in the snowman. You know, in, yeah. in, in the, in, when they showed the initial. No, he means off podcast. No, I said it on podcast. No, oh. I guess we wouldn't have because he was already around at that point. You're right. It would have been off podcast. Before the podcast. When, when, when they showed the promo picture of oh, Matt. Well, I thought you were talking about the snowman outfit, which was Oh, we like the podcast. Victorian look. No, I like the Victorian look. It was the, the, the when I first saw Matt in the, the oh, tweed jacket, it was like, yeah. eh, that's, you know, no. I, I you know, I, that's okay. I, I grew to, I grew to be okay with it. So, you know, that's been my reaction to a lot of them. Is, is, when I first saw Eccleson in the leather coat, I went, what are you doing to Doctor Who? He doesn't wear leather. It doesn't matter. Just my initial and first impression. So, uh, uh, I'm more curious about why the TARDIS is way different again. <laughs> See, kind of, I like it. I like the new TARDIS. Here's where I come down on that TARDIS. I don't care what the heck the TARDIS looks like. If it's a blue, big blue police box, fine. <laughs> and you know what? It's a big blue police box. So that's this, good this, enough for this me. This is where Glenn comes down on it. As long as it can act, then I don't care what it's wearing. <laughs> good enough for me. It's a big blue police box. Well, I, well, I get a little frustrated, and, and people are fine to have their opinions, but I get a little frustrated about how pedantic we get <laughs> about the exterior of the TARDIS. Well, here's one that's really interesting, because I did do a lot of research into the TARDIS exterior this week. Oh, good God. <laughs> I did because I, I, am, in, in, I want to find that image for everybody that's complaining about this car TARDIS. I want to find that image where they have every doctor's TARDIS lined up. People on are that complaining one thing. about it. I think well, it they're, they're they're making comments about oh they they shouldn't have changed it. Why did they change the background of the police box uh, uh, insignia on the side? Blah blah blah. And why is it a different color? It looks it's a different size. I wish I could find that image. I couldn't. Or they have a picture of Dude, all of the doctor's TARDISes. TARDISes. It, I, I, all I did over it the, the other place. day and I couldn't find it. And anyway, they're all side by side, and every single one of them is different, save two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 very much. What's really interesting is when you see that image, and then you put this one in comparison to it, it almost looks like they're going back to the movie TARDIS. It really? looks very similar to Paul McGann's. I version. just googled Google. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Do you get a paradox? What there? happens what when happens? a man goes down his own portal? Google. <laughs> Oh, my computer just shut down. Oh, I think I broke the internet. Oh, you're not being real. Don't Google Google. I can kill, still continue to talk then. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and the fact that the 76 one has the black. Well, none of them have been black. It's all been blue. Well, according to this one. I think that's a really funny, because it's, it's I, I don't ever remember seeing a black one. I think I remember seeing the black pull the open sign T tom's was a really dark blue maybe that's like a I'm darker blue than what the the, the inside yeah, of the it's TARDIS really was. dark it's practically black um oh here it is okay it did show up this time well because uh, the other day when i googled tardis it was all the jody whitaker stuff tardis stuff was dominating but now i found it so. but um it's very similar the, the 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 police box up at the top is a little bit smaller it doesn't quite go all the way across the 
the, the, the front panel, which is something that, that uh, McGann's TARDIS had common with it. The, uh, See, I think it looks more like the 76 TARDIS. Yeah, I would agree. The, the, the big difference Even is the, the, size. the, yeah. the pull-to-open sign is reversed. The handle's on the other side, so it opens into the center as opposed to out to the outside. And McGann's is the only one that had ever been reversed that okay, way. I'll give you that on that. Um, the handle and the lock have also flipped a couple different times, and that matches McGann's look. Uh, the, the, the paneling, the windows, it's very, very similar to McGann's TARDIS. I don't know about height, because McGann's was a little bit taller than the, the ones previously, but... I, I like just it. that it's that a big actually blue excited. box. If yeah. they'd have painted it red and changed the shape of it, then I probably would be going. Oh yeah, I noticed the difference, and I I either don't like it or do like. Uh, no, it's just, this is a big blue police box. Come no, on. I don't care. I mean, for, drop it. We, we had the same conversation about what's with the St. John's ambulance sticker showing up on the door. You know, it's, which is gone. You, um, you had that conversation. <laughs> I think I went. Who cares if there's a sticker on the door? <sighs> It's going to be one of those podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn is going to be pedantic. Yes, yes, I am. Um, but about the, being pedantic. Yes, just <laughs> <laughs> pedantic about being pedantic. Just the fact that it looks a little bit like McGann's TARDIS of all the ones they could have gone with. It strikes me as that one most in particular. It actually excites me more than anything else about it. I'm still. It's a doctor. You're right. It's a TARDIS. As I've said, when the opening credits start and I go, what did you do to Doctor Who? And then the TARDIS shows up. I'm like, oh, okay, it's still Doctor Who. I'm just sort of, my, my thing is, when we see the interior, I think that's where the discussion is. Oh, and it, well, de- de- yeah. Depending on the changes in the interior. Because that's where the TARDIS is, vastly varies from, from not, not necessarily Doctor Doctor, because it was the same from you know the first Doctor all the way to the third Doctor. Then it was the same from... The, when the third doctor ch- uh, changed to the fifth doctor, so I mean we've had, but we've had drastic differences in interior. So I think that's that's where the conversation is for me anyway. The exterior with these minor changes, it doesn't make a bit of difference. Well, I even think overanalyzing her costume of oh here are all these references this is a bit much, a bit of a stretch. I think people are stretching quite honestly. Well, I think that is true. Although I, because the really so, the, I, the seen... only things that jumped out to me were the stripe, which kind of is the same colors as Tom Baker's scarf. And the pants kind of uh, remind See, me I've of... I've seen the stripe uh, both referenced to as Tom Baker-esque and then as Colin... Or not the Colin Baker. See, I think they're way so off on that. I think somebody's... People are just randomly I think guessing. People, I, I think most of the people that I've seen is, is say that that really does kind of invoke Tom, Tom well, Baker's colors. And, and one of the colors articles that had it broken down said, oh, but you can even see that there's the same kind of striping on the inside of the coat. And I'm like... Yeah, somebody went... <laughs> Yeah, I, really? I, I saw all those where they were kind of really drilling well, there down is, to those. But I don't but... know why that matters. <laughs> because that's Tom Baker's scarf. It's no, it isn't. It's and the scarf. outside of the coat it's looks just, like just, Peter Davison's. Yeah, <laughs> or, or or Sylvester McCoy's because it's yeah. the same color. The pants really... do remind me of uh, Patrick Johnson's. <laughs> he wore his kind of high like that with well, the, this, with I braces. I don't know if you knew that, but these were Patrick Johnson's pants. Oh well, that's why <laughs> they're so that's, short. That's why you couldn't tell the color because they were black and white episodes. But wait, those aren't checkered though. No, he wore the one solid. Oh, 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 it's in a missing episode, so you didn't get to see it. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what did your family think of it, Glenn? Uh, Caitlin and Holly both liked it. Uh, Holly didn't like the pants so much, but that was about it. She said, her, and this was to her point, was the pants would be okay if they were either short or they were high waisted. She said the problem is with them being short and high waisted, it looks like she's just hiked her pants up too high. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Sean can't unsee that. Nope. Just a lot of ankle. Not even really ankle, because it's like up <laughs> lower calf. Because the ankle would be further down. Because it's high top boots. How, 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 how many episodes a, a year do they film in quarries? I think that's actually this a good idea. This outfit is impractical. I think it's a great <laughs> idea to have high pants, high high cuff For all pants those puddles? with boots. Yeah. Because the bottom of your pants aren't going to get wet, and you're going to have boots on to protect your feet from getting wet. So I think it's a great idea. And they're not heels. Impractical. No, I didn't want heels. That's, I didn't say you did. I'm just saying they could have gone impractical. Yeah, they, well, they, they, yeah I that mean, they very easily could have. And it's like, what, Although what? Missy, she has uh, uh, quite a heel on her boots, so... She seems to manage all right. So she doesn't yeah. run though. Missy doesn't need to run. No, she. Really, I mean, <laughs> good point. She, she, she was surrounded by Daleks and just kind of went, "All right, I'm here. <laughs> I'm going to take over." 
The run. doctor has to run. Yeah. Well, in other news... So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've spent so much time on one image... Let us know what you think. <laughs> Send it, in your uh, feedback. We had some great discussion on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I promise I won't berate anybody else for their judgments on the clothes and the TARDIS. <laughs> Just Sean. <show. laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying you can't like it. I, I, I'm not... I, I'm absolutely, you know me, I, hey, yeah, all inclusive. I'm just, I'll be the first person to say, I didn't like, I didn't like Tom's maroon, I still don't like Tom's maroon outfit. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, but, no. but that's because I first saw him in the other style, because his number was exactly the same either. He had different, he had different coats, he had different, you know, mm-hmm. pants, he had different shirts. I don't like Pertwee in the cape. <laughs> What's wrong I with you? I, yeah, I, I, I like the crushed velvet, any color, but I don't like the cape with it. A lot it. of people didn't like uh, Trout and Stovepipe hat. I love the Stovepipe hat. Love it. I wish you'd have kept it beyond the second story. That's what this outfit needs. It needs a hat. <laughs> if she had a hat, it might bring it all together. Maybe a Stovepipe hat. <laughs> with, with, a ma- with a matching uh, color band across the, mm-hmm. see, then, then, then it would work. Uh, as the stripe across yeah. the shirt? Oh, okay. See, I'll go with that. I'd go with that. Not gonna happen. <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> a big sunbonnet. <laughs> All right, move us a on. Move us on. on. Move us on. <laughs> on. I don't care uh, anymore. <laughs> Doctor Who has announced what they're doing this year for children in need. <gasps> what are they doing for children in need? We're getting a clip. Oh, from the from presumably twice upon from, a time. Oh, from from the Christmas special. Yeah. Ah. So not a new clip. Yeah. And so not it'll new, be a not new content, it's a clip from the episode. Well, that's, that's sad, part, but it's been done Part of the course so, yeah. for the last several years. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Ah. And it's scheduled to be shown during the first half hour. So of Earth. Children in Need? Yeah. Whoa. Well, oh, good. We don't have to wait. Then. So it's an experiment. If people watch for the first half hour and watch Doctor Who and then bail and go to something else and they don't make as much money this year, they'll realize they need to put Doctor Who later in, this, <laughs> in the show. Yep. I'm sure people do not just watch Children of Me for Doctor Who. <laughs> well, and our last bit of news uh, is con-related. Planet Comic Con announced that Alex Kingston will be <gasps> coming to the convention in February. Yay! Who's that? She is River Song. <laughs> oh, I know her. Do you? Yeah. Not personally, but oh. I know who she is. <laughs> you know, from ER. But and from Arrow, she was going to be there one other year, but she didn't, couldn't come. So I, I just have to wait until we get closer, and I'm, <laughs> she doesn't cancel again. Not to her fault; she had other projects. But wow, I'm kind of a downer tonight. Well, you know, <laughs> I'd forgotten she was supposed to come previously. I was just excited she was coming. Yeah, yeah. Was she? She was a bit last year, or was it two years ago that I she don't was think so. An was early the, guest, yeah. Was it the year that John Barrowman had to cancel too? I think that was it. I think it was both of them. John Barrowman canceling overshadowed it. Yeah, I think it was then. that same year. But it was probably Arrow related then, because Barrowman's was work related. Yeah, that was the year Stephen Amell was there, but she she bowed way earlier. Yeah, she Amell. was out. She was announced and, and then she has out not been like on Arrow a month years. later. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, that's exciting. Anyway, I'm excited. February sixteenth through the eighteenth. Yeah, shit, that's a good get. I'll, uh, I would definitely go see her. That's it for news. We got any feedback, Keith? No feedback. But if I, you'd like to send us feedback about the outfit, <laughs> <laughs> where can they send it, Keith? <laughs> send it to feedback at travelingthevortex dot com, or just go to our websites travelingthevortex dot com and fill out the send us feedback tab. Let's move on to our review of an audio where it doesn't matter what they're wearing because you can't see it. <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> yes. I would honestly rather argue about this outfit for the rest of the hour <laughs> than talk about it. Really? That bad? Yeah. Oh, I really? Oh, well, let's, yeah. let's, let's, get, let's, okay. get, in, get, let's into get into it. Yeah. The plague herds of Excellus. The once proud city of Excellus is a crumbling ruin in a state of siege as barbarians catapult pestilent animal <laughs> corpses into the city to spread disease among the, those trapped inside. Excellus is a city clinging to life by a thread, but ancient prophecies foretell a final retribution for those for the past arrogance of its rulers. When the sun is eaten away from the sky, when the ancient relic of Excellus is taken from its rightful resting place, and when the, when strangers are discovered among the people, then shall the whole world be doomed to die. Today the sun is a moth-eaten shadow. 
Plans are afoot to steal the relic. And a very tired and very fraught Bernie, Professor Bernice Summerfield has just stopped into town in the company of a mysterious traveler in space and time known only as Iris Wildtime. Bored. Bored. <laughs> Bored! <laughs> I was so looking forward to this because it was like, we're going to get Benny and we're going to get Iris. And it's going to be great because they are going to bounce off each other and there's going to be interplay and, and, and they both kind of love the doctor. And, oh, I cannot wait for this cat fight. It's going to be so exciting and so much fun. Nothing happened. Their chemistry was not all that great. I love the actors. I love both the actors. They did take nothing with their chemistry. It was flat. There was nothing between them. And I don't mean like, oh, because they didn't fight. I mean like, no, just they, their their interactions were like nothing. I they, agree with you 100%. Just nothing there. I agree with you 100%, with the exception of maybe when they got drunk together. That was, uh, there was something there, I thought. Maybe, but um, yeah. And then, okay, well, so we go back to Excellus again. Yawn, <laughs> nothing happening. This planet sucks. This city sucks. There's nothing, nothing of any value. It's like Tatooine. Nothing of interest happens here. <laughs> Just quite literally. And so Iris is here to pick up the handbag. Oh, because she's going to clean up her mistake. You know, like the doctor when he inadvertently left his face imprinted on the side of a mountain and had to come back and deal with that. Or or when his face is uh, uh, imprinted on the uh, uh, inside of a wall from a, uh, a time lash thing and they, they find out that he's a friend of the people. Oh, he's, he's here to... No, she's just here to get the bag because she needs to accessorize the That did happen kit. twice to the doctor. Yeah, it did. Huh. Interesting, huh? But she's just here Maybe. to get the handbag because she needs to accessorize and then doesn't take it with her. Wasn't the accessorizing just an ex- her glib excuse it was, to come back yeah. to get it? Yeah. When she finally... But she didn't. <laughs> when she finally explains her motivation, when she didn't need to at that point. Once, yeah. once we get to the point, she didn't have to take it. It's uh, thin... And then, so these people are catapulting pestilence <laughs> cows over the wall, which at first was kind of like, ooh. And it's, this, one, this one's my own fault. I cannot fault the story for this. Monty Python slipped in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as it did, it was all over. I, I couldn't do it. was just like, I'm done. <laughs> I really can't bother with this anymore. Run away! Yeah. Run away! I, I, I finished listening to it, and I'll be honest, I don't remember much of the ending because I was in such a state of, eh. <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just couldn't be bothered. But nothing happened. It was, it, it was the, it was, in many ways, it was the perfect capstone to the Excella saga. No, see, I disagree. Because I disagree. I don't feel like much happened during all of that either. Yeah, I disagree. I, this was the weakest for sure of all of them. Agreed. And this entire story feels like an afterthought. Oh, yeah. It's it, like it felt a, like somebody said, hey, you didn't really wrap up the handbag. That's the, the relic, problem. Is it feels they, like they scrambled oh, yeah, to go, oh, that. wait, we really need to deal with this. Oh, let's bring Iris back. And, hey, we've got the mini property hanging around here. Let's... Bring her in too, and and then we don't have to do the doctor. We can do a Benny story on Excellus, and it's just for all of the, a lot of the reasons that you pointed out too. I I, I didn't think it. I didn't you. I I won't put it down as much as you are. I didn't think there was nothing there. It's just there was there wasn't a lot of interest in the story. There wasn't a lot of interest in the guy's motivations. That was uh, eventually we find out, which although Iris saw it from. A long way ahead that you know he's being very theatrical and he's trying to manipulate these people by pretending to be this prophet um the the queen and her Which could have been at least entertaining if, if if he'd maybe gone over the top with it and been even more of a mustache twirling kind of oh i thought his performance was but, fine it's just the character was just kind of yeah eh. um this this empress and her whatever the guy was i mean obviously they had a little more than just a friendship there but i don't think it really sort of laid out the problem is we knew where excellus was going we knew it from day one where excellus was going to go because they went to excellus's future and we saw the desolate land and then by the time we get to the third story and the place is annihilated by nukes we know that that's being wiped out and so when we get to this one, I presumed in my head that this was chronological and was going to happen chronologically, and we find out that it was, and that these people actually managed to 
hide in this one specific region of the planet in order to survive it. I think the catalyst of having the priest guy, and I don't even remember his name, the prophet. Um, Sniper. Sniper. Um, trying, trying to bring this whole... Because he did believe somewhat the, the, the prophecy of, of Excellus, the I don't even know what I'm trying to say. He did believe somewhat, even though he was very theatrical and manipulated the whole thing, he did foresee, not foresee, he did perceive that this end had to happen the way that, that he was trying to manipulate it too. As he talked about the sands rolling out, uh, running out on uh, the planet and, and Excel. Wasn't he from the future and was able to manipulate yeah. all well, of that? Well, and that's to be the just way he it. Wants it. Oh, that's right. That's how he saw it. And so. Because it's go- all to get. Uh, revenge on the queen who had decided right well that's the the, that's that's where i'm getting to is he that idea of 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 the the finalization of this prophecy but then what they decide they have to do is they have to inject by, by way of iris they have to inject this uh you know malevolent queen who was (laughs) she she's this malicious queen that that goes and takes over galaxies and planets and things like that and then she feels bad about herself so she decides to be good and so that sets this guy up to have this vin- i mean that that's where it goes off the rails ultimately and that's to come I up with enjoying it more to come up with that to be the reason behind this relic just that seemed weird so when we're getting to the point where this guy although it's a little more like grayborn but uh, where he's, you know, this is how things are supposed to play out. The sands of times go, times, you know, are running out. They have that whole analogy. I'm thinking, okay, this is kind of cool. And then we get off the rails with this <laughs> mad queen. That it, it's it like just, it's like we, it's, it's, it's like, like we like couldn't decide story, what we were going to do with this. Every story. story that has ever had a prophecy about an eclipse. When the sun's going to be eaten. That's what I thought was happening. It was an eclipse. Yeah. Not that actually the sun was starting to eat, which I got the impression it actually was. And then, oh, no, it's just being blotted out by this massive fleet of warships that aren't warships anymore from this mad queen who's not mad. She's yeah. sorry. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doctor Who. <laughs> you just do your thing, man. I... At this point, it's not even really Doctor Who. I because know. It's, it's, it's a mini. It's a yeah. It's a mini story. It's even branded as a Benny story. I'm not going to say any more until you talk, Keith, because I, I I need to know if there if I'm if I need to know if I'm as off the rails as the story uh, is. I don't. I think you're a bit harder on it than than I would be. I mean, it was. I I kind of agree with both of what you what you guys have said of of how it's a mess, and it is, and that's part of it's because it's trying to clean up the mess of the. Ex- Excellus Saga to begin with. But I I think I had a little bit more fun listening to it than a couple of the others at times. I think part of that is Iris because she's such a hoot. Um, and yeah, <laughs> her and Benny could have had better chemistry. I, I agree with you there. But it was just, it's it's there. It's It finishes it. It's I'm done. I don't ever want to visit Excellus again. Yes. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> this was probably one too many, but... It, the, I think there were some cool ideas in it that just didn't get to follow through as well as they could have. So, um, Sean, the writer of this, Stephen Cole, yeah, also wrote Land of the Dead, which you and I didn't like. I can't yep. remember. Can we, can I don't think I did either. I think I liked. He wrote the Apocalypse element, which I think we were kind of lukewarm on. And uh, he wrote and better. he wrote the Wormery, which neither of you guys liked that well. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> So apparently it's just Stephen Cole stories we're not fans of. <laughs> well, we've got more coming. So oh boy, in the main range, yeah, he's so got some opportunities to redeem himself. Here. Buckle in. I just the whole. Here's the problem with Excellus. Nobody dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Because you either get resurrected as a meat puppet, or you, or you're a zombie. Well, to begin you're with, zombie. you're a zombie protecting the realm. <laughs> yes. And then uh, your then your body then in the second story your body dies but your conscience goes on, and then in the third story you're annihilated by nuclear war but you got to go hide off in somewhere and then you come back or you're a meat puppet because 
Yeah, I just and and it and it doesn't matter for how long you're out of it. Whether you get thrown off a cliff and then you get merged in with this, <laughs> with a crazy uh, a, a warlord and a and a high priestess, you can still survive that. Or if your sister Marianne Margaret, whatever her name is, and she apparently is eaten by the cannibals in the first story off camera, and then comes back in this one, it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> just just so that you can have that connection with Iris, what? Ah, uh, oh, let's nuke the whole planet. Boom, done. But people survived. Are you kidding? <laughs> just, we just can't catch a break. Every single step of this story was like, no. And the, I, I take that back. The first five minutes with Benny in the spaceship on the run, which really felt dropped in, like, who was her son? And I missed out. We apparently, there's well, a big audio two, in there. Two series yeah. before, lead up to this. So. So, yeah, yeah. I feel bad that we dropped this one in the middle of it, but just wanted well, to finish off the cells and be done with it. The, the thing about Benny is she started in Virgin New Adventures, and she gets married in uh, Happy Endings, which is still probably a little past midway point of that range okay so i think she even had the child because i think some of her i don't i'm not sure 100 percent, but because i read this a long time ago but i think her sto- adventures in her series with big finish are some of it's running congruently with events that are happening later in the diversion new adventures novels so there's even there's even more of her backstory in the virgin new adventure right. novels as well so I don't know. Anywhere you jump in with Benny, you, there's probably going to be some backstory that we're just going to lose anyway. But 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 I, I was okay with it. I was yeah, just yeah. like, oh well, I'll, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'll have to go back and like, read or listen to those. The first five minutes of it with Benny on the spaceship and the hot tub behind the locked door, that was pretty great. To your point, I, I liked that. Think, <laughs> I think, and I again. That's why I, I didn't give it the horn. I don't have anything to go on. <laughs> I think that f- first five minutes is what a, a good chunk of what we can expect from the Bernice. Summerfield type oh, of story, yeah. so I'm hoping that that there's more of that well, in the rest great of the in, adventures. Uh, 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 the, the first, uh, uh, well, Human Nature. We listened to that one. We didn't listen to that. We read that. Oh, you're right. right. We read that one. What we read that. One? She was in Shadow of the Scourge. Shadow of the Scourge and, and uh, the one, um, the Dark Flame. Dark Flame. Yeah, she was good in both those. So you know, I've had good Benny. Oh yeah. You know, and I like. <laughs> What? No, I just I've had good Benny. I've had good Benny, um, <laughs> and and I like Lisa Barman a lot. So I, that's one of the reasons why I was looking forward to it. But yeah, this was just, this wasn't good Benny. It's just me, mid level meandering Benny at best. Well, I think Benny, I like Benny the best about this story. In fact, yes, I agree that I don't think Iris and Benny played off each other like you could. You pair those two up, you there's you should have been able to do something wonderful with that. But I think Benny in this one, that first five minutes, her distrust of Iris immediately, her capture and the way she's reacting to the guy, her captor and the things that she's saying, I think her dialogue is the best. Mm-hmm. In this, her dialogue and her character is the best her, thing her about Her amount this of disbelief story. of what's going on around her. Is yes, just... yes. <laughs> Which was needed because it was giving us a voice. Well, it's not yes. even mo- mostly disbelief. It's 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 not disbelief of... of, of the situation is disbelief that she's gotten into this situation is more yeah, what, when she's just trying to take a break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's what I thought was the, the, the funniest thing about it. But in a way that's also part of the problem with the story is that I, I expect at this point, I expect Benny to be a little bit more of a, a, a force to be contended with. And she's very passive through most of it. She spends the majority of the story running away or being captured or, you know, she, she doesn't, she doesn't do she reacts to things that are done. Yeah. And it's kind of like, that's not the Benny that I... I and, and her and Iris both. Like, Iris is a hurricane in her own regard. I think you're... And... I think you're painting Benny based on a very select sampling. And not that's, that, that's true. Not that I've had much more, but I've I've also read uh, Shakedown. And there's something else that I read that, that had Benny in it. And I can't remember. It was besides Human Nature and Shakedown. And I think this is really kind of true to Benny's character, from what I've experienced. Well, Benny, Benny. Benny is regarded by because many in, as the template for River. Well, and so y- if you look at it, yes in that and regard, no, because I think I think River is a yeah, case. I think so. River is a I think River's a more um, what am I looking for outgoing um, 
manipulative. I think Benny is more of a the money grab. I think when sure. she started out as an archaeologist, she was more of an Indiana Jones type that was just kind of in it for herself. Uh, whereas River, while she's in it for herself, she's also having fun with it. You know what I mean? She's yeah. being she's being flamboyant with it as well. And Vash, so, I think, is Vash. a good comparison. Yeah, that's a great. There you go. Um, so I, yeah, no, I, I, I think as we as we go back oh, to, I think as we go back to some of the earlier Benny stuff, I think you'll find that this is kind of par for the course. With okay. Benny. Because even human nature, she's still very... She's almost forced to have to take a role yeah. in that. And that's kind of thrust on her to the fact that the doctor doesn't remember who he is because he's hiding out. So, uh, yeah, I think maybe... That I, one's I, almost... Maybe I, speaking, I would, I would but throw I think human it, nature out of the equation just because it's such an exception to the rule anyway. But. Sure, sure. Which, and it makes sense that Benny would be kind of on the back foot waiting to... need needing to be thrust in to take action because of that archaeologist background of she's used to being there to observe mm-hmm. as opposed to being an active participant. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Bored. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, a, it's not a lot of excitement. So I'll, yeah, in this uh, gratefully, story. it wasn't two hours. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's the, if you ask me... Gratefully, none of these were doing that. <laughs> what's the best thing about Excellus? The performances. What's the second best thing about any of the Excellus stories? They're only an hour. <laughs> yeah. I I've, I've only feel like I've lost four hours of my life instead of eight. So that's, that's a definite positive. <laughs> um, I like to chalk it up to the fact that they were... The main range was even in its early days when they did these. Um, they've certainly, I think, later done multi-part stories outside of the, the ranges, kind of like this when they group compilations together. Uh, the best judge is probably Keith, who's who's listened to a lot more of the compilation stuff. I think they've certainly gotten they, better they at it. They certainly have, yeah. yeah. So this was, you know... Because all the ones I've been listening to don't have the doctor in them either, so... Yeah, I think this was a, a, a learning ground for them on how, how to do these sort of sure. event-type stories and... Hopefully, hopefully we don't get any more. Like and, and, and well, and was as with anything. I mean, we, we always try and look at the bright side of stuff. It, it's it's a learning experience for Big Finish early on. It was an attempt to do a multi part story that had this kind of wide ranging, um, epic nature to it. And I, I I can chalk a lot of this up to execution. It just it just you know maybe the ideas are good. But because they were executed so poorly, that it just didn't it didn't give me that wide ranging. It executed really... in the writing, I think the production values have always been consistent and good. Well, and, and yeah, well, that's what I mean. Is the yeah. the, the, the the they fell well, down? I think, yeah, on the, the, on the, the production of this was was good. In it's, fact, a, it's not like some of the early big finish where the production is a little lesser. It's, I'll tell you, high quality. Yeah, no, it's, I, I I don't blame the audio production of it at all. As with most Doctor Who, when I don't you say blame the production value. That's just part I, when of I say it, execution, though. I mean the writer flubbed it <laughs> just across the board. Writers, writers mm-hmm. did not do their jobs, and you know had some great ideas. And whoever the mastermind, I, I envision this. I, I can't I can't say for sure if this is the way it went down. Very much this felt like when I would read the Star Trek books and they would come up with these grandiose ideas of how to do a multi series crossover. They would come up with a story arc that would involve an original series book and a next gen book and a Deep Space Nine book and a Voyager book. And of course obviously you've got seventy years separating <laughs> these two and then these are kind of all running concurrently. So whatever problem the Enterprise crew came into, they didn't fix it so that they could keep that problem going into the into the next gen time frame and i read a ton of these because paramount realized they could make money on it pocketbooks realized they could make money on it so they constantly did stuff like this this feels a lot like those ones that they did for these novels that were big in scope and really short on follow-through because there just wasn't it just wasn't done right and so there was usually one person that was responsible for creating the concept, and then they would farm each book out to a different author or authors who would mm-hmm. kind of go and, and do their thing with it. And so you never really know who's to blame. Is it the overall seeing arc person, or is it the individual who tackled this particular piece of it? But that's what it feels like to me, is just one of these that, mm, no. One of the things that I, I every, I'm glad I remembered this this time, because every time we've done an Excel story on this podcast, I've always wanted to mention that this is and and it, 
maybe the first one, the third one, and this one I noticed it the most. But the music. I noticed the music in these, and I think I, I liked the music in this. It's, and I, I don't often notice the music in Big Finish as much. But when I do, I key into the fact that I like it. I think it's invoking the correct mood, the right, you know, the framing around the story. And all four times for sure, but I think specifically in one, three, and somewhat in this one, I don't remember so much in Rising. I, I, I there was times that I noticed the music and noticed the use of music. And so I was very impressed with the score on this one and how they did mm. it and how I think. I can only assume because I know there's music in other ones, and I think that maybe the music, maybe it's because the stories weren't as solid, the music was coming across to me because I, I, my, my brain maybe was focusing on other parts of the thing of the other the things that focus yeah, on, something yeah. to focus on. But I really, really remember the music for each of these kind of standing out and being feeling like it fit the mood, even if the story was, wasn't good. It sort of felt like it went well. Um, I kind of makes me want to go back and listen to other big fish audios to see if I paid more closer attention to the music that I would feel the same way about the music. Mm-hmm. But that was one of the things that stuck out on me on, for me on this one was the music. Itself. Is there any note uh, as, uh, or do we know who did the incidental music on these? Is uh, that a, on the wiki page or on the, uh, in the big finish uh, credits? It's not in the Bernice one, but it is in the Excellus ones. David oh, Darlington. Darlington. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, they, they actually released the music on a, Soundtrack. Oh, they did it. Oh, there's a whole bunch of music. Oh, oh he did it for this one. For all three, all four Excellus. Oh, he did it for all four, yeah. Well, now you can, uh, maybe some of the ones that you, you go back to some of the big Finnish main lines that you've particularly enjoyed and just out of curiosity, I wonder who did the music on that, that one. Yeah, <laughs> certainly so. Has he done, I wonder if he's done he's other done big Finnish. Quite a bit. Has he? So he's probably kind of their. Uh, quite uh, a bit. Dudley of... Simpson. <laughs> Yeah, the main range and special releases and Companion Chronicles and Sarah Jane Smith and Gallifrey and Bernie Summerfield. Oh, he has done a lot. Iris Wildtime. Looks like he might have fallen off at some point, though. Cause... Oh, well, he did the uh, sound design for Doctor and the Pirates, too. Flip Flop, that's another one that I noticed music in. Live three thirty, uh, live thirty four. Remember noticing me? Now, th- those two particularly, I think, had well, flip flop didn't, but live thirty four had elements of that in, involved in the story, the music, mm-hmm. you know, the, the the sound design, things like that. So, hmm. memory lane, circular time. Yeah, it's, but I did. We have no, a couple are, more of the main range. Of those are not. That's about it. Those really aren't jumping out at me though. As to going, oh, I remember the music in that. So, but flip flop, I definitely do. Master, I remember the music being really good in. That, that one I don't as remember. Well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Cool. All right. Well, there's something. I found something. Yay! <laughs> A nugget of positivity. <laughs> Silver lining. <sighs> All right. Well, anything else you guys want to say about the Excellus series as a whole? Better luck next time. <laughs> Bury it. <laughs> <laughs> Fill it in. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. Um, no, it was, uh, again, great performances with a, a really kind of interesting idea that, for me, did not come to fruition yeah, at all. I agree. And so I look, I, as, as always, I look forward to other big finish stuff, just not this one. This is not a series. Well, you don't have to look and, forward to this one because we're yeah, done. Well, I mean, I, this is not a series. This one, Big, I'll go back and, and and listen to Big Finish. I would not go back and, and re-listen to these. Even yeah, Anthony, uh, Anthony Stewart, even Anthony Stewart Head would not is not a big enough draw for me to go back and. No, I kind of wish they had gotten him for something better. Has, they, has he done any more of the Big Finish besides no, the Excella stuff? Not that I've seen. That's too bad. Maybe they can David Warner him and they'll bring him back for something else later. Yeah, they need to. Sean, what do we got coming you up know, on the schedule? Real quick, he'd be an interesting one for the Unbound series. If they ever did more of those, he would make an interesting doctor. He would make a really good doctor. Sean, uh, <laughs> what do you got coming up on the schedule? Coming up on the schedule, uh, this week we finish off uh, the Sea Devils for our Friday Night Who Doctor Who Watch Along. Uh, every Friday at 10.30, we're going to do parts four through six to finish off that story. And then next week, we uh, on the podcast itself, episode 357, <laughs> We will be reviewing uh, uh, another Brigverse book, uh, Lethbridge Stewart, The Dreamer's Lament, by Benjamin Burford Jones is on the, uh, the the schedule for reviewing next week. And then for those of you that want to go a little further out, uh, Friday Night Who on the 24th is The Rings of Aachen Hotten. 
Because <laughs> that joke never gets old. Black <laughs> Friday. On Black Friday. After you're done shopping, come home and, and watch a story. Because you'll be done where, on Thursday. Come, come home and watch <laughs> yeah. a story where the Doctor and Clara go to an international bazaar, an interstellar bazaar, and go shopping. So, see. Well, they don't really buy anything. No. And then sing to a planet-eating sun. So it's very much like Black Friday shopping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the uh, cast, uh, the following week we will do Big Finish number 94, ID and Urgent Calls. So it's one of those that's split into two. Uh, and So then, that's uh, not two separate audios. That's one. It's all it's one, one. Well, it's two separate audios within one release, if that makes okay. sense. Is how I understand it to work. I want to say I've listened to part of that one. Uh, and then uh, we're still kind of uh, figuring out whether or not we'll be including the uh, uh, Titan Comics Eleventh uh, uh, Doctor Season Three issues six through ten, depending upon how the multi Doctor crossover story the Titans doing is is uh, impacted that because I don't want to jump in the middle of that. So that one may or may not be part of that. Cool. All right, well, be sure to uh, support the podcast if you can. You can become a patron of our podcast by going to our page and clicking on the Patreon button, and uh, any amount uh, is appreciated and welcome. And thank you to those who are continuing supporters of Traveling the Vortex monetarily, not just listenership, but actually donating to the podcast. It helps. It goes a long way, and we appreciate it. And a side note, uh, speaking of that, is uh, now that uh, we, we've gotten the reports officially, um, uh, if you uh, were part of the great Traveling the Vortex pledge drive, uh, which I, I thought was pretty great, um, you uh, can be looking forward to... Uh, <laughs> I didn't even occur to me if it's great on the front of it. But... <laughs> the, the great Traveling yeah, the great. Vortex pledge drive. Yeah, it was great. It was great. You know, it's like a quiz show. Yeah, that's what I think. I think that's what we, I didn't, it didn't even bat an eye because that's what we call the quiz show. I think everything should just be the great traveling the, the great vortex. Traveling. The great <laughs> traveling the vortex. The great traveling the vortex review of Excellus. That's your title for this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if you took part in the pledge drive and uh, altered your uh, Patreon uh, uh, donation for that, uh, there are uh, gifts that are being uh, bundled up and ready to be shipped out very, very soon. So uh, your 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 pledge drive surprises are almost on the way to you. Anything else? Nope. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Oh, wait, there's one more. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Until next week, I'm Glenn. How's that for pedantic, Glenn? (laughs) I'm Sean. I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.